Well, what's up guys, Jason here for Soul Fire, and today I want to talk about the uh, Conquer series. Now, I've led a number of groups through this series, and I thought it would be good to walk through the homework assignments that they provide. One of the, my favorite things about the Conquer series is that they have excellent follow-up assignments to help you in your road to recovery. Let's talk about week seven for the Conquer series and the homework assignment. So this is volume two, uh, week two, but overall it is the seventh in the series. They've got four things for you to work on this week. Now, primarily they are focused on getting the word of God into your life, getting the truths of scripture into your life, especially to counter the lies that Satan has thrown at you. So the first thing that they want you to do is to experience God's word. Now this has to do with speaking truths from his word throughout your daily life. So the challenge that they gave us this week was, before your feet hit the floor in the morning, speak some of those prophetic verses, speak some of those uh, truths from scripture that God has been using in your life out loud. Just speak them out loud. Let that truth flow over top. And then they've got this challenge for us this week. They said, don't medicate meditate. Now I think that's pretty good. You also can probably sub in some other M words that we shouldn't do, but instead we should be meditating. They want us to begin to meditate on the truths of scripture so that we won't follow back into those destructive habits and patterns. So one example for my life as a uh, minister, before I get an opportunity to speak, I will meditate on and pray through John 18, 37, where Jesus says, for this purpose I was born, for this purpose I came into the world to bear witness to the truth. When I think about my job, that's one truth from Scripture that I want to speak out loud. God has called me to proclaim the truth. But what would it be for your job or your vocation or your day-to-day? -day? What are the truths of Scripture that you can be meditating on and speaking out loud? The second thing that they want us to do is to speak the truth in response to your life. So we got to go back to last week where we went through the 10 most painful events, and we asked ourselves the question, what lies did Satan want me to believe as a result of these painful events? So take a look at that list of lies. Maybe there were some commonalities. So for example, in my life, one of the lies that I have seen is that I am all alone. Identify those lies and then begin to ask yourself what truth from scripture will counter those lies. Now, if you're not sure uh, where to find those passages of scripture, this might be a, a good thing to get together with a few guys from your group, get on Bible Gateway or something like that, and begin to search the scriptures for truths that will speak counter to these lies. But well, let me give you just a list of some scriptures that a number of the men in my groups have used to really counter the lies. One of the ones that comes to mind is 2 Timothy 1.7, where it says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. I often think of Joshua 1.5, especially in response to the lie that I'm all alone, where God says to Joshua, as Joshua is stepping into Moses' feet, he says, just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. I will not leave you or forsake you. Galatians 5.1 says, It is for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Romans 8.1, if you're feeling rocked by condemnation, says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of spirit of life has set us free in Christ from the law of sin and death. And then one of my personal favorites when it comes to my identity, who am I, is Matthew 3.17, before Jesus had done any ministry at his baptism, it says, and a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Let that truth wash over you. If you are in Christ, you are God's beloved son. So the challenge here for this week, identify those lies, begin to counter them with truths from God's word. Let me challenge you to do this with those uh, truth passages. Write them on a little index card. Keep them in your pocket. Let them also be a token of victory like we talked about from your survival kit last week. Keep those verses in your pocket, and whenever you're tempted, pull them out, begin to read them, begin to uh, meditate on them, begin to process on those truths. Eventually, you want those memorized, so you'll be able to just counter those lies. Now, this is not a quick fix. Got to give you a warning there. This is not a quick fix. If Satan has been throwing lies at you for five years, ten years, maybe a couple decades, it is going to take some time for the truths of Scripture to begin to counter those lies. But when you begin to... Focus on scripture. Maybe five, ten years from now, your default will not be to medicate pain from those lies, but to rejoice in the truths of God's word as you've given years and years devoted to letting this truth soak into your lives. The third challenge they have for us this week is to stand firm. For you to think through what are some scenarios in my life, maybe it's a character or integrity issue at work, maybe there's something in your relationship with your wife or your kids or with some friends where you need to take a stand for God, that God is calling you 
to stand firm. Maybe you can connect with some of the men from your group this week and, and share with them that scenario or that situation. What is God calling you uh, to stand firm in? And that can be a way for you to begin to practice God's calling. Pursuing the calling that God has given you will be a tremendous resource to not fall back into destructive sin patterns. And then lastly this week, number four, they talk about developing a life of worship. Super easy way to do this is just to be mindful of what you are listening to. Uh, maybe on your commute or maybe before bed, find some worship music that really speaks to you, that really helps you focus on and meditate on uh, God. And listen to that throughout this week. I do a lot of these groups with college students, and a lot of times the music that they're listening to is not helping them in their walk with Jesus. It's not helping them in their recovery process. In fact, a lot of times, if it's uh, very unwholesome, it's actually going to be shifting them more toward temptation. We had a number of these men replace that with worshipful music, and it begins to have a tremendous impact on their thought life and on their temptation life. So become a man of worship. So that's it for this week, for week seven. Definitely want to challenge you, take time to do those four assignments, and you will see a tremendous impact this week in your recovery journey. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If you want to see more content like this, click the subscribe button. If you've got questions or comments, add to the discussion below. And if you want to support the channel, check out the Covenant Eyes affiliate link below. Covenant Eyes can help you along your journey to recovery by providing accountability software on your phone, your computer, and other digital devices that you use. Thanks so much. This is Jason for Soulfire. I'll catch you in the next one.